in this video, I want to talk about the four basic types of tissues that we have in, in the body. But let's begin by talking about what tissues are. So tissues are groups of cells with a common structure and function. There are four main types of tissues in the body. One, we have muscle tissue. Two, epithelium or epithelial tissue. Three, cognitive tissue. And four, we have the nervous tissue. So let's look at the functions of the epithelium or what we call the epithelial tissues. What do they do? One, they are for protection. Two, for absorption. Three, for filtration. Four, for secretion. For protection, what does it do? It protects us from the outside world. For example, the skin. It's made up of epithelial tissues on the surface. Absorption. Examples where we have absorption occurring in the epithelial tissue is the stomach and in the intestine, the lining of the stomach and the intestine where absorption of digestive food occurs and other chemical substances. And then filtration, this occurs in the of kidneys for well, where we have filtration of the blood into the glomerulus. Then secretion, epithelial tissue can form glands that secrete chemical uh, substances. Okay. So think about the endocrine um, system. We have epithelial tissues over there that can secrete hormones or if you think about the exocrine system, example, the salivary gland, pancreas, and so on, they have epithelial tissues that produce secretions. So those are the four main functions of the epithelium, protection, absorption, filtration, and secretion. What are the characteristics of epithelium? epithelium? One, they are closely attached to each other, forming a protective barrier. Two, they always have one free, or what we call the apical surface, open to the outside of the body or inside, that's a cavity of an internal organ. So there's one free end, which you call the apical um, surface. Okay. It always had one fixed, what we call a basal section attached to the underlining connective tissue. So the underlining connective tissue, that's where we have the basal section. So you have an apical section that's open to the surface or the inside of a body cavity and the base that sits on the connective tissue. And then four, it has no blood vessels, but can soak up nutrients from blood vessels in connective tissue underneath it. And four, they can have a lot of nerves in it. So they are innovated. So we talk about innovation of the epithelium. And then six, they are very good at regenerating themselves. So they can fix themselves if they are damaged. Classifications of epithelium. You can classify epithelium based on the shape. So that's the first classification we want to look at, the shape of the cell. The first shape is known as the squamous epithelium, squamous epithelium, where we have flat scale-like cells. So the cells are flat cells. You see the nucleus running in the center of the cell, but then the long axis is horizontal, right? It's parallel to 
the basement membrane. It runs parallel to the basement membrane. And you have cuboidal cells that look at like cubes. So if you look at this, they look at like cubes. The nucleus are round, like it's round indents. All the sides are equal, you know, just like a cube. And then you have the columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelium are tall column-shaped cells, right? So we see that these are like tall column-shaped cells here. Okay. And then the long axis of the nucleus is perpendicular to the base or the base cell surface. So you can see the long axis right there, okay. as if it's pointing upward. The second classification is based on how the cells are arranged, so cell arrangement. The first of this is the simple epithelium, simple epithelium. This is made up of single layer of cells, single layer of cells, usually for absorption and filtration. And then the second type is the stratified epithelium made up of multiple layers of cells. Okay. So it helps to, to protect the surface from abrasion, from rubbing, right? Like, especially like the mouth and on the skin. So wherever you need pr more protection, you, you, you have stratified epithelium. And the areas where you need to have rapid absorption or filtration, you have a single layer of cells, which will be the simple epithelium okay. right so before we go into connective tissue um, i would like to mention that you can have different types of stratified epithelium so you could have stratified squamous you could have stratified cuboidal or you have stratified columnar epithelium right and sometimes the columnar epithelium or the Cuboidal epithelium may have fine hair like structures on the surface, which you call cilia. So, cilia help to move substances on the surface of the cell, um, especially in the respiratory tract. The cilia beats to move mucus you know, from the respiratory system, like the trachea, into the pharynx, where you just cough up the mucus. So let's look at the connective tissue. What are the functions of connective tissue? One, wraps around organs to cushion and protect them. So protection, right? Cushion and protect organs. This stores nutrients. And then three, internal support for organs. Four, as tendon and ligaments, they protect the joints and attach attach muscles to bone in each other. So as tendon and ligaments protect joints and attached muscles to bone and each other. Runs through organ capsules and in deep layers of skin given strength, right? So for protection, for nutrients, supports internal organs, serves as uh, attachments like the tendon and the muscle and the ligaments, uh, holding bones together and attaching muscles to bones, and also as capsules that help to give extra strength, capsules of organs to give extra strength. There are three elements of connective tissue. One, you have the ground substance. There's a gel around cells and fibers. And I have the fibers that provide strength, elasticity, and support. And then you have the cells that produce the matrix of the, or the ground substance of the connective um, tissue and other structures within the connective tissue itself. There are two kinds of connective tissue. 
One, you have the loose connective tissue. Examples of loose connective tissues are the areolar connective tissue. So the cushion around organs, loose arrangement of cells and fibers, right? So they provide cushion around organs and then loose arrangements, form loose arrangements of cells and fibers. So you have the areolar connective tissue. They have the adipose tissue. The adipose tissue, the storehouse for nutrients, right? So they're packed with cells and blood vessels. This is, is the fat, fat cells that we have in our body. You know, those, those are known as adipose tissues. Then you have the reticular connective tissue. They provide internal support, you know, supporting framework of some organs. You know a delicate network of fibers and cells that we see in the connective tissue are due to the reticular connective tissue. So you have a real connective tissue, adipose tissue, reticular tissues, you know, under the loose connective tissue. Then the dense connective tissue, that's the second type, dense connective tissue. Um, some of, Examples are the dense connective tissue, tendons, ligaments. They are regularly arranged bundles packed with fibers running in the same way or the same direction for strength. You know, they provide direct strength in one direction. So the fibers point in the same direction and they are tightly packed together. So we call it dense connective tissue. And they are, and Dense regular connective tissue, or they have that regular pattern of arrangement. Then you have the dense irregular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, like the skin, organ capsules, irregularly arranged bundles packed with fibers for strength in all directions, right? So those are the two types of dense connective tissue, dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissues. So the fibers are not arranged the same um, direction. They are pointing different directions. So you have strength in different directions. And there are special connective tissues as well. Examples of these are cartilage. Cartilage. Uh, let's look at the functions. One, it provides strength with flexibility whilst resisting wear. Example, the epiglottis, the external ear, the larynx. And then two, it cushions and provides sh sh shock absorption. So it's a, the cushions and shock absorbs where bones meet. So they act as shock absorbers at the point where bones meet. Example would be intervertebral disc and then joint capsules. Right? Those are examples of special um, connective tissue known as the cartilage. Then bone is also a special type of connective tissue. Bones provides framework and strength for the body, allows movement, stores calcium, and contains blood forming cells. So those are some of the functions of um, bone. And then the blood, Blood is also a special connective tissue. There are many functions of the blood, but this includes trans transportation of oxygen, so it transports oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients around the body, and also it is involved in the immune response um, system. You have the white blood cells, red blood cells, um, the, the lymphocytes, the neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, they all fight infection. And then the red blood cells transport the oxygen in the body, in the, in the blood. And they have the nervous tissue, nervous tissue. So nervous tissue, they conduct impulses to and from body organs via what we call neurons. Okay. So the neurons form the basic unit of the nervous system. 
Then two, the three elements of nervous tissues are the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. The muscle, the muscle tissue is next. The functions, one, responsible for body movements, moves blood, food, waste, and waste through body organs. You know, like the smooth muscles, they contract and help to propel you know, food you know, through the intestines. And they're responsible for mechanical digestion as well. Now let's look at the muscle. There are three types of muscle tissue. One, the smooth muscle. The smooth muscle looks like this. Look, they're spindle shaped, spindle shaped. And they are found in organ and blood vessel walls. They are also known as involutory muscles. They are non striated and they are uninucleated, so one nucleus. Non striation, do not striation, the fine patterns that you see on if you cut across this muzzle. You don't see that in smooth muzzle. So, yeah, as I said, they are spinal shaped cells uh, for pushing things through organs. And the second type of muzzle is skeletal muzzle. Skeletal muzzle. So, if you look at skeletal muzzle, it's a beautiful shape here. These are the striations, the brown fine structures that you see running parallel to each other. Those are called the striations, striations. Okay. So if you see any structure that has this pattern, then you know you're looking at uh, the smooth, sorry, look like skeletal muscle. It has a nucleus. The nucleus run as long as it's run parallel to the outer surface of the skeletal muscle. So they are large body muscle cells. So large body muscles, they are voluntary, right? And they are striated muscles packed in bundles and attached to bones for movement. So they move bony parts, move bony parts. So that's another, this is another illustration of the skeletal muscle. So if you're walking, you use your skeletal muscles. And then we have the third type of tissue known as a cardiac muscle. Look at the structure. Okay. Um, okay, so it looks like they also have, like, they look like striated, right? If we call those intercalated disc, intercalated disc. Um, but one feature about the cardiac muscles is that they show branching. See, there's branching over here, it's your branching. Unlike the skeletal muscle, you don't see branching. You can see parallel, it's, fibers are parallel to each other. So that's another representation of the cardiac muscle here, it's showing the branching. And these are the intercalated disc that you see. Okay. So cardiac muscle found in the heart wall, they are involuntary. They are striated muscles with intercalated disc, connecting cells for, synchronous, for synchronized contractions during Heartbeats, you know, they ha has uninucleated fibers, uninucleated fibers. So one cell, one nucleus in each cell. So these are the types of tissues, uh, overview of the type of tissues that um, you should know for the exam.